The correct one. We're entering an era of biological warfare, and this is the beginning of a threat level that will affect us for the rest of our lives and probably for generations to come. Now, David Asher, who you've seen here many times, Dr. Stephen Quay is one of the most respected scientists in the country. Uh, they speak, they're speaking out today as House Republicans begin their push for the truth because we need to know what happened in order to stop this from ever happening again in this particular way. While Democrats led by Nancy Pelosi are launching their own special select committee, theirs is on January 6th, they have shown little interest in participating in the digging that is going on, starting today, on this virus on the Hill, the virus, of course, that killed 4 million people around the globe and 600,000 Americans, by the way. Now, Dr. Fauci and Dr. Collins, who say that they have always been guided by science, they were invited to participate here today, but they were not interested in being part of this or listening to what has really been, I listened to a lot of it this afternoon, really, really compelling testimony in that room. So in a moment, Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace joins me with her thoughts on all of this. But first, State Department correspondent Rich Edison with the recap of what is going on and what is still happening on Capitol Hill right now. Hi, Rich. Hey, good afternoon, Martha. And there are multiple investigations into the origins of this pandemic. House Republicans say they will have their report on this next month. Part of that is this forum. It's ongoing right now. It includes members of Congress, scientists, former Trump administration officials. The witnesses and questioners here largely believe the evidence shows the virus escaped from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, with one citing a statement last year from a top scientist at that lab. Today's testimony is an effort to answer the question poised on December 30th, 2019 by Dr. Senji Shi, the head of coronavirus research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. She had just been told that a novel coronavirus had caused an outbreak of pneumonia at hospitals close to her laboratory in Wuhan. In what I believe was her last unscripted public utterance, she has been quoted as saying, could they have come from our lab? Now, she and the Chinese government have both said that there is now no evidence that the virus came from her lab. Other scientists have said they believe the virus developed naturally or just say that they're unsure and that these theories all need more examination. This is not an official congressional hearing. Democrats control the House, and so this is a Republican-only event. Democrats say it's critical to allow the Biden administration's intelligence review to finish first to avoid any premature or politically motivated conclusions. Meanwhile, China's government is responding to this issue. A foreign ministry spokesperson says, quote, we once again urge the U.S. side to immediately stop its political manipulation on the origin tracing issue and stop playing dirty tricks on the scientific community. It should adopt a scientific and transparent attitude to invite World Health Organization experts for origin tracing study in the U.S. China's government is pushing for investigations into American bio labs, all while refusing to share data or allow a transparent investigation in China. Back to you. Massive degeneration uh, of this process in a lot of ways. Rich, thank you very much. Rich Edson at the State Department. Let's bring in Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace of South Carolina. She's one of hundreds of GOP lawmakers who sent a letter to Speaker Pelosi calling for an investigation into the origins of COVID-19. Congresswoman, great to see you here today. So the, the Biden White House has uh, launched a 90-day investigation, but they signaled yesterday that they do not expect that they're going to have a definitive conclusion at the end of those 90 days. What do you think? Think about that and what do you think will happen after that? Well, it's not excusable. And look at COVID-19 right now. As you stated earlier, Martha, 4 million people around the world have died from the virus. 600,000 of those people right here in the United States. And there are three labs in the world that do this gain of function research. And it just so happened that one of those is in Wuhan, China, the exact same location where the Wuhan virus originated. And Nancy Pelosi just recently said any hearing in Congress investigating the origins of COVID-19 is simply a distraction. That statement, not only is it negligent, but it's grossly negligent. We owe it to the American people and every other country around the world that's suffering right now to get to the bottom of how this happened so we can prevent it in the future. And quite frankly, China is playing big ball here and we're just slapping them on the wrist. We've got to hold them accountable for this. Yes. You know, it, it's so unfortunate how politicized um, so many of these things become. And this is a select committee. So you have this select committee and you have Dr. Fauci and Dr. Collins not showing up um, because undoubtedly 
they would be asked some pretty tough questions. We've asked them some tough questions here, um, but they did not show up for that. And here's uh, Representative Jordan and uh, Admiral Jawar talking about why they didn't come. Why don't you think they're here? You know, I don't know. I know Tony and I, I know Francis uh, pretty well. Um, I, I can't imagine a reason because this is a worldwide pandemic in which millions of people have died. When public officials who are supposed to have our trust don't show up to members of Congress, I think that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there's this, you know, sort of back and forth history. And you have the Pelosi investigation select committee that's focused on January the 6th. Republicans not didn't want to do that. Then you go back to the Benghazi committee, select committee investigating Hillary Clinton. So, it, unfortunately, we have this environment in Washington and we're faced with something that, as Dr. Jawar rightly points out, is a global pandemic. And we can't even get together on trying to make sure that we figure out the, to the best of our ability, where this thing came from. That, that's, that's disturbing. Yeah, absolutely. And therein lies the problem with Washington, where we're so divided, we can't put the health of our nation and our kids first. I look at everything that's happened over the last year, the, the negative economic impact on our country. I have two kids. I've seen what it's devastated to them and their school and their education and the inability to see their friends and being at risk of getting COVID-19. And we're not doing the people's work. We don't show up. And we should be listening to and following the science, even when we disagree. And just a few weeks ago when Dr. Fauci's emails were, uh, were publicized, his remarks and comments regarding the lab leak theory were actually redacted for no reason because those particular emails were not classified emails. The people deserve an answer. Dr. Fauci should show up and answer the tough questions now that we have more information on the floor. Well, uh, you, you know, it, it's really incumbent upon him to do that because one, one of the other questions is why some of the early samples were deleted of the virus by the NIH. And there are indications that the virologists in China requested that that happen. Um, this right. is uh, U.S. virologist Jesse Bloom's response to that. He says there's no plausible scientific reason for the deletion. It therefore seems likely that the sequences were deleted to obscure their existence, particularly in light of the directive that lab destroy early samples. I mean, what do you make of that? Well, Dr. Fauci, I would love to be on a panel or in committee when he testifies. I have so many questions. He lied about the use uh, and utility of masks early on in COVID-19. He lied about the amount of funding going to NIH, to the, from NIH to the Wuhan lab. He has been dishonest with the American people. He's a scientist, supposedly, but not following the science. He's more of a scientist activist. And he should be there to respond to Republicans and Democrats alike. And I wish that Nancy Pelosi would take it more seriously. The American people now more than ever need our country to come together on areas where we can agree. And that includes saving the lives of millions of Americans in the future, understanding the origins of COVID. I mean, if this happens again to our country, it's going to be pretty sad that there was sort of a level of uh, Trump derangement syndrome over the fact that he pointed to the lab early on. And so therefore, you know, an entire class of people in the country um, decided that, that they were just not going to look there. Do you believe that's what happened? I do believe that because anything that former President Trump touches, they want to disavow, even when he's right. Um, look at the COVID-19 the COVID vaccination, the reason we're so far ahead of any other country in the world, because President Trump allowed the FDA to be run like a business rather than a bureaucracy. We saw an idea to market in 10 months rather than 10 years. We had great innovation uh, in our health care markets, and they don't yeah. want to give him any sort of credit. And yeah. it shouldn't be that way. We no, should be united. Be yeah. It, it shouldn't. Um, you know, you have to give credit where credit's due, no matter what you think about the people who are carrying it out, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, and you're right. Um, we're going to talk about this for, uh, heading into the 4th of July. None of us will be doing any of the things that we're going to do on the 4th of July if it hadn't been for that vaccine. There's, right. there's absolutely no doubt about it. Uh, Nancy Mays, Congresswoman from South Carolina, always good to talk to you. Thanks for coming in.